Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I welcome you to our eighth uh, lecture of creating a complete uh, inventory management system. You still remember in our previous lecture, uh, we were able to create uh, Ajax and we're also able to design our model of what of um, uh, of what of stock uh, items. So in this lecture, we're going to proceed from where I stopped at and go to other higher things. Without wasting much time, let's go ahead and start our timer. We're going to do 40 minutes. And then after 40 minutes, we shall call it a day. All right. So this is where we are in the previous lecture. So we're able to load items. So and it is, we even implemented that it will even load only the item for your company. So I've already implemented that. So I proceed to the next thing financial period this one will be generated also okay let's put a condition here so we're going to get the active financial year so let's create a, a a class where we shall be putting the common functions okay so let us go ahead and create here some class that we shall be putting common functions you know common functions utilities okay so let me come here and create that class so I'll come here to important commands. I'm going to create a class called utils. It will not have a migration. It will just be a class. So remove the M. Okay, it's just going to be a common model. I'll be putting there my utilities. Okay, a common thing that I need that I'll keep on reusing. Okay, so I create that class. Tap. So this is a class called utils. All right. Okay, so this is a class called utils. I can even not extend the model. Okay, you just make it like this one and I remove this as factory. So in this class, I'm going to put my common functions that I'll be using. Okay, so the thing that I want to be using. So for example, I want to, to get the active year, the active financial period of what, of uh, a certain company. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to write a function. So if you want to, to create a function that you can access without creating a class, that's what you call a static function. So you can just simply say static. Okay. So static function, and then you say uh, get okay active financial financial period so you can see uh copilot has helped me to create this logic so uh let me say period and then let me since it is static so it will not know the person who is logged in let me accept here company id so you have to send us your company id okay so this function is going to be responsible for getting a static financial period okay so it will go ahead and say financial period equals to and then say financial period where so this is a model of financial period where company id then comma it passes the company and then where and it also attaches another and status equals to active and then say get the first so this one will be able to get the what our uh, first and then this just return even without checking okay just return this say return so this one if it is not there, it will give us what? It will give us none. Okay. So this, it will help us to get the active financial period. So let me come here back. So that is utils, eh? Under utils. Uh, so let me come back to our our control of stock item. So on top of this form, before you even uh, create, uh, before you even create, um, before you even create uh, a, an, a record, we're going to check if you have a financial active financial period if you're not there if you don't have it then we shall just send you back and not allow you to proceed okay so let's go ahead and so on top here on very top i can say uh financial period financial period equals to and then i say utils so make sure that you write this utils and then make sure that is imported and then you say utils and then you put a this uh uh, two semicolons, I mean two colons, and then say get financial period, the same method we just created, 
and then here we pass the the company id or the person who is logged in we pass their id okay like this so this one will get for us a financial period so let me dd here and see so this function when we want to get a financial period we shall just be active financial period we are just be calling that one you see it gets for us the active financial period so i check i check if it is null i redirect back or i can say maybe what you call a return what you call admin error admin error yes admin error and then you say admin underscore error it's a laravel admin thing and then say maybe please create i mean please create a financial record first okay something like that. so we shall not allow someone so let's come and refresh so the financial record is not null. let's go and do the false and we see so it will be like this please create a financial period first okay so maybe create a financial period first so this one will trigger a person that okay you cannot proceed if you don't have a financial period so i'll check if financial period is not there please get it so that will be like a blocker that you cannot proceed if you don't have an active financial period all right so that's it so in this financial period we can make it hidden whoever are going to write this logic from the other creating and then it will be generated from the other side so you can make it here okay let us remove it we are going to do the on creating okay and then to handle that stuff so that is it then after so what does it mean it means that we we'll begin by setting the category of the product okay and then here we're going to put the name here so we're going to put here to call name okay it's going to be a text and then make it what make it rules and make it required so that is the name uh the description now we're going to also look at another thing here uh sometimes you see our description is going to be a text area of course text area okay but the challenge is you cannot be able to bold you cannot be able to highlight you cannot be able to underline let's say that you want to create a a full a, a complete thing that explains something properly then mean that here will be limited okay so there is another extension that we're going to see how we can add that will give us ability to create a text area where you can bold where you can put tables where you can put images where you can express yourself much more better okay so let's go ahead and install that extension do we need it I don't think we need it now. HTML extension is called Quill extension. For now, let's leave it. Let's just focus on the product. Okay, let's leave it. But it's called uh, Quill uh, Laravel admin extension. For now, I don't see where it's going to help us. So let's leave it for now. All right, so let's say that the person will just write there the plain text, okay? So let's go ahead and do the, the description. I mean, the image. So it's going to be. Uh, image you've already looked at this one and then maybe you can say maybe unique name something like this unique name okay so that will be for the photo okay so you can make it optional uh, i think that's it let the description come last okay like this so the barcode will be generated by the system we're going to also see how we can generate the barcode okay I'll show you how I can generate the barcode in the next lecture for now. Let's leave it. And okay, the barcode I'll show you how I can generate it. Uh, then here the SKU. The SKU that we can leave it as a text. So let me put your barcode. I'm going to show you how I can generate the barcode. So we shall also learn how to generate the barcode. Okay, in the next lecture. So Text uh, SKU. All right, so uh, we can ask the person, we can ask the user. So we can ask the user whether they want to generate this SKU or the system should generate for them. Okay, something like that. 
So to do that, we just simply come here and say, um, select select okay this may be radio okay and then you put generate sku then you put here our options can be manual and automatic so if they say manual we let them enter it if they say automatic we shall use the uh the, the system to generate it manual sku automatic so if you say auto we shall generate it by the system okay so if you say automatic it means that this is a batch number okay that we're going to enter it by yourself okay so you put here now you go ahead and write here when so it's just another laravel admin thing uh -huh. then you say when 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 it is uh manual then you should allow the person to enter there the sku okay where is sku field in? okay the sku so when it is manual so this uh, you just simply open here and say when and then open these uh a bracket and then you say the first parameter pass money and then write function and then you say open here and then say form and then open curl bracket and then you say you do like this so you say if it is manual then you should allow him to enter it okay then you say enter sku okay or others call this maybe batch number okay So this batch number is not that we shall encode and put what uh, stroke batch number okay it shall encode and put in the system i mean in the in the in the in the what in the in the in the barcode okay so if you come here and refresh you'll see that you have achieved this so when it is auto when you say manual you see when you say manual we automatically show this field okay enter sku stroke batch number if you say auto then the system will do what will generate it that is good uh, then also let me make this one also to be what to be required so some products they come with their own what with their own sku others you don't have the sku you can make the system generate it okay make it required all right so uh this one we can use it on creating okay when she's when you i mean when you're updating we can ask if you want us to update the what the sku okay so let's make this one available when someone is updating so if i check if someone's updating i just simply say if is creating okay so if is not so put here is not if it's not creating okay then we can show him this option that okay do you want to update the sku something like that but right, let's put here radio and then put here update sku and then put here update sku so batch number okay and then if you say yes then you say manual or so we do the same thing here so this thing is going to be the else part so this the first thing we shall only show it when he's creating so I put here else so when he's creating that's when you shall show this when he's not creating then you shall ask him this question of are you updating and then you say yes then we put the when inside there and then this when is just going to cover whatever i demonstrated here okay so update sku you put here yes and no and then open 
close curl bracket and then close it here. Right, let me explain it properly. Uh, so I can put here if is 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 there's another one called is editing if he's editing then i'll ask him do you want to update sku and then i put here options of what you see of yes and no okay okay so if he say yes okay so i put here when yes okay i'll go ahead when you say yes i'll go ahead and get what i have here then i ask him do you want him to generate automatically it should come from the system so you go ahead and or you can even just ask him to enter the sku the manual one because let's just if you say update then you should enter the new sku here All right, though SK is I'm asking this one because it's not going to be a common use, a common thing. So SK is not normally updated. So when you say update SK, when you say yes, then you say enter the SK. All right. I think that is okay. So you can pause and look at that and then make sure you understand it. All right. So of course this form is the heart of the whole system, so you have to do it very carefully. So if you say that update SK will only show when we are in editing mode all right so that one is done uh the next thing that i'm going to do the gallery okay so sometimes we need to attach multiple photos on a what on um on a on an on a product okay we want to attach multiple photos so if you want to attach multiple photos let's come here and then come here to the form and then say come come here to to image upload and search for the call multiple picture upload okay so you just simply put this what you call multiple image okay so here i just put multiple image so you can put here maybe um item gallery okay and let's say multiple image okay they should be removable and they should be unique with unique names Right, so after doing that, now there's one more thing that you have to do in your model. Okay, in your model, you have to use the setter and getter. Okay, so that when you're creating the pictures, they should encode in JSON, and then when you're getting them, you should they should decode in what in in in, in uh, from JSON to the known one. So if you don't put this one in your in your these functions in your in your model then it will not work so let's go in our model so our model is where stock item so you can just simply come here on top here and click on it this is our model i click on it all right there we are so i'm going to come here and put copilot say data for gallery so it will just do it for me <laughs> it will just do it for me but you can pause the video and see how i've done it okay get gallery okay and make sure that you're using the same spelling the first keyword should be in capital okay and then the word attributes like this and then you say if it's not null and the essay string is maybe more than uh, four characters or more than th more than three yes more than three characters and then you say json decode okay and then you decode the value and return so that it will be the getter and then you come here and do also the setter for gallery. So you need a copilot if you want to get this kind of beautiful suggestions. And then you put here, then say attributes gallery equals to JSON in code, just like the way it is here. Okay. So that is how you have to do it if you want to add there the gallery. So pause the video and see how I've done it. So this is how you want to make multiple files it cannot be the word gallery maybe all the time you can even use a different word so this one will enable us to attach multiple photos and then you attach like this multiple photos multiple files 
you can come here and add more things say maybe it should be removable you can add it's unique it should be uh downloadable huh downloadable something like this yep so you can add those things so if i come here and refresh if i come here and refresh you'll see that we shall be able to attach more than one photos okay you see i can attach more than one photo here i can even remove one something like that all right Uh -huh. you pay if it has refused to work on the co on the street account you should pay it's just ten dollars all right so uh that is it so i hope we are together i hope you are together so we proceed uh buying price it is going to be required so we're going to put here rules i mean sorry it's going to be um going to be it's going to be what it's going to be decimal buying price decimal and then uh, we make it required required okay and then we make rules to be done and then selling price And then you come and say selling price or the worth eh, that you have it okay by default zero and then also make required so original quantity sorry it's going to be decimal original quantity bracket in units of a category uh -huh, by the way on uh, the category name we may need also to specify the units okay here then current current quantity should we allow someone to edit the current quantity no let's not allow them the system should be able to capture the current quantity all right so here in copilot i mean sorry here in um so let's go ahead and refresh everything is all right okay everything is all right uh -huh. now let's go ahead and uh, refresh i mean so let's go ahead and uh, what was i going to do what was i going to do, 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 do. okay i was saying that here when you're sending back the products i mean the category name it is better we also put the units that they uh, we are using to measure here so the units okay so let's go ahead and attach the units on subcategories so you come to api so here when you're sending back so here on uh, name text and then put here bracket put here measuring unit okay so this one should be able to attach a measuring unit let's see if it has come you see all right so let's see uh, the words that we use it measuring i think that's what we used measuring unit i think that's okay now oh, which one did they use okay. subcategory measuring unit let's let's go ahead and find out which one did they use it's measurement unit oh. Why did I get this word? Measurement unit. Okay, so we come to our API and put here measurement unit. All right. So if you come here and try to search, you'll see the measuring units. 
So this person will know that right now they are dealing with what? With kilograms is what we are meaning here. Okay. Uh, so I think that's it. I think that is uh, enough for us to create a what? To create a product. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a product now. Okay. Let's go ahead and create a category. All right. So you come here to new and then I can use some fake filler and then select a category here. Okay. And then say maybe we are using manual and then maybe put some SKU and then go ahead and do what and upload. So there is some issue. They say category doesn't have different values. Okay. So that's where the whole business starts from. Okay. So category does not have a default value. So we are going to do what? We are going to uh, we are going to create a hook. Okay. That is going to set few things that uh, are automatic or that, ma that that must be automatic. Okay. For example, category value here we selected only the what? So we're going to create a what? A category value. I mean a hook that is going to be say, setting the, these things. For example, this one is subcategory. So the category need also to be what? To be set. Remember, we had a main category there. So what he, this is going to be like a very important part, okay? Because it's, it is a must, okay? Now, this, I'm going to go to subcategory and then we create uh, a preparation method that will be preparing something before it is saved, okay? So we're going to create here our boots. Okay, so we come here to our boots. All right. So here in this boot, so this is boot. Let me first delete this. So we're having here the creating. So we're going to sort of have the updating. So before something is created, something is updated, we have to set, for example, things like what? The category ID. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to design a method that is going to be responsible to do those things. Otherwise, if we do it twice here and here, then it is going to waste our time or it's going to make it even inaccurate in a way that you may need to change one place and then you end up doing what? Changing something uh, that you do not want to Okay, and then you end up having a matrix. So I'm going to to create a static function here. Okay, static public function that are going to call prepare maybe prepare data. So it's going to be receiving the model, and then it will be returning. Okay, returning that mode, something like that. Okay, so what you're going to be doing here, so on creating, you're going to be calling this function to prepare data. So you just simply say our model is going to be self and then you say prepare data. So self, it will call this one here. Okay, and remember this is just prepare data, it is outside uh, this. Okay, and also here. We also call it self prepare. So it will be preparing things before they are what? They are saved. So I can say return uh, return model and also come here and say return model. So this function will be called this function prepare. It will be called before something is saved, either on, on creating or on updating. Okay. Now let's begin with the first thing. For example, the stock category, it is not set here. Okay, so when I'm writing like this, it is we are setting the subcategory, not stock main category. So what we're going to do, we're going to write here the logic that is going to get the, the, the main category, I mean the subcategory, and then set the what? The main category, I mean the main category before it is set. So you can just say maybe sub, subcategory equals to, okay, equals to what? Equals to sub, I mean stock subcategory. 
subcategory and then we say find okay so we search the subcategory so here the subcategory it is using which id which name it is called subcategory id stock subcategory id so we search so all the data will be sent through this model before okay it will be sent through that model so i check if this subcategory is not found then i know that maybe something is not right okay so if i say if this subcategory is equal to null i throw an error let me throw an error and say subcategory not found throw an error and say uh, invalid stock subcategory so if it is found what does it mean it means that now we now know the stock category okay so i can now say uh model and then you say stock category equals to stock category id equals to the subcategory now the subcategory it has a what a stock category id because each subcategory has a stock category id so by doing like this we shall have done what we shall have created the sub the category and then we return okay so by doing like this it will be able to call to update the category before everything is done what is uh, is it will make sure that everything is updated in this way i hope you get it so if i come here and i try to upload again okay what are they saying field so category is not found let's try to uh-huh let's try to submit again okay where are we where are we doing this from oh my god we are doing it in the wrong thing this whole thing i'm doing it in the wrong thing it's supposed to be in a product item let me remove this i'll just cut this all right yeah okay then let's go to the uh, stock item stock item i've just cut what i were doing in the wrong place i'm going to come and put in a stock item here so it's a stock item i hope you can see it now it has a boot so before it saves something it first call this prepare method and this prepare method it's going to get the subcategory if it is found it updates the what the subcategory and make sure the subcategory is correct so there now if you put here and try to submit okay at least uh we can see the error has changed financial year okay remember we do not set the financial year okay so here uh let's also set the financial year so how do you get the financial year if we, give, we begin by getting the person who is uploading this product okay so how do you get the person who is uploading this product make us say user equals to user and then you say model use uh created by id if you still remember that's how we uh named the the person who is creating this product created by id so i check if this person is not found i return null i mean i throw let me throw an error and say invalid user or person not found okay if the person is found i'm going to go ahead and get their that person's company active what active financial year okay so you just simply say uh financial year financial period equals to utils dot get financial period and then i pass this person's what this person's company id okay remember he, every person has their company id so i check if the financial year is there's no they don't have active financial year i return i say okay if active financial was not found so this validation will help us even to work in the mobile application since they are doing in their it is being created in a centralized place then if a financial is found and then i get the model and i say financial period id equals to the financial period dot id so i'll be able to do what to do that so that is okay now i hope you've seen how i've done that so let's go ahead and try to update again aha uh -huh. upload uh-huh invalid user so the user is not found okay so uh let's see how we named the user let's 
stock item controller uh -huh. it is called created by id okay default is supposed to be id not oh my god sorry okay created by id if it is creating created by id and then you say default okay let's remove this and put outside i think that's okay okay so i say default is going to be the user who is logged in and then id uh -huh. so this is the i the real name the real id then you come here and say okay user that find if equals to null not it's i've just made a mistake i was just putting <laughs> the opposite eh? if it is equal to null then i say invalid user something like that i've just done a mistake by my own self okay so right so everything now should be fine uh-huh let's try to upload now everything is beautiful you can see the record has been created you can see the record is here now there are more things that you're going to do there are more things that you are going to do there are more things that you're going to do uh there are more things that you're going to do uh when you're doing what when um okay well, there are more things that you're going to do here it's not just we are done you're not done okay so let's come to edit so when you click on edit um there are more things that i'm going to show you that well, that you still have to do here okay so when you click on edit you can see the category is not showing i mean it's not showing there by default so you have to display it okay so to display it uh when you're editing you come back to so controller so on top of ajax on top of ajax you add another thing called options option so in this option you get that stock item okay you get that stock so in this option just say option that function you say function and then you say id then you say uh the stock category okay let me just say stock categories not for, supposed to be stock item okay i say cut can say sub sub category equals to stock sub category and then i say find so if it is not null else i return nothing so if it is not null i go ahead and return an array okay this is an array okay an array of the stock item with its name and the measuring unit okay you see others if it is null i return this one so you can pause the video and you see this how i've done this one okay so this is the only way how you can be able to do what to uh display something or resume something you see when you're editing so you see it is there okay now uh you see now here update sku we can say maybe by default should be off no so update sku should always be no by default okay let's make it by default be no or we can say maybe when you're creating uh, update sku it is no when you're creating okay and also maybe by default you can also make it no here so you add this one eh? you hide it and then say it is no by default all right so let's go ahead and refresh now so it should always be no if you not set it so i can try to change something without any error everything is okay now there are things that we are going to do still uh, before we even proceed. The first thing that we that we had to do, let me first show you uh, the current quantity. You can see the current quantity, original the the current quantity when you come here at the table, it is zero. Okay. So what I'm going to do uh, to avoid me feeling this and again and again and again, I'm going to get this record and then try to be updating it 
as I check if the hooks are being uh, called. Oh, our time is up. I think you're going to start from there in the next lecture because now we're going to work with okay the, the, the quantities. When I upload here, you should also update here the, the stock quantities here. I remember in this category, I should be able to know, okay, I have this amount of money. So we have to update this side as well so that someone can be able to know, okay, I've invested in this amount in this particular amount. All those things I'm going to do what? Uh, to work on them. So it's not just that uh, we create that and then it is done. We have to put a lot of logic in the hook. But at, at this moment, you can see it has been, um, it has been, uh, it has been created at least. Okay, so let's begin from there. In the next lecture, we have to work with the, also the, the what? We have to work with the SKU generation. We have to work with the barcode generation, creation of the barcode, all those things you have to do what? To create them. So in here, we are not really done because this is the heart of the whole what? Of the whole system. So let's start from there in, on Monday. I recommend you to practice tomorrow and make sure that at least you catch me so we move together. So on Monday, you shall meet and then uh, proceed from what we are, from where we'll stop today. So goodbye and see you. Unless there's a question. Is there any question, guys?